Um, my name is Caroline Clark. I'm the engagement manager at Iowa PBS. Thank you again for spending your night with us. And we are joined by a very special guest to give us some insight into the care and the lives of the penguins that we have right here in Iowa at the Blank Park Zoo. So joining us live is Kaylee Krause from the zoo. Kaylee, welcome. Hello. Good to see all of you. <laughs> Kaylee was in the comments a little bit answering some questions, um, but we wanted to have an even um, lengthier conversation about all the different penguin species and and like I said, the care of the Magellanic penguins at the zoo. So let's just jump right in. And Kaylee, if you could give us a brief introduction of yourself and how you got started at the Blank Park Zoo um, and working with the penguins. Yes, uh, I'm Kaylee. I actually grew up in Iowa. And I think about once a week, my grandparents took me to Blank Park Zoo. Uh, so I've grown up around the zoo. I interned at the zoo during my college years, and I was lucky enough to get a position here two years ago. Uh, I work with the penguins. Right now we have eight amazing penguins. Uh, my team also works with the gibbons, lemurs, seals, sea lions, tigers, and lions. Holy buckets, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big variety of animals. Um, um, I, th I think you had said that you brought some replicas or props with you tonight too, specific to penguins. I wondered if you could show us those props and talk a little bit about them. Yes. So I brought what we call a replica egg right here. So this is actually a Magellanic penguin egg. It's not much bigger than a chicken egg that you find at the grocery store. Yeah, geez, it's pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are really cool. They lay two eggs. Uh, that's the average size of their clutch. These guys have a really tough life as chicks, as you saw in the documentary there. Uh, yeah. So they have to have a small clutch size so they can give as much time and care as they can to these chicks to help make sure they make it out of those young, young tough times. Uh, and then another prop I brought with me today is a feather. Um, it's an itty bitty oh, feather. <laughs> Uh, but these guys are covered in thousands of feathers. Uh, they help keep them warm and waterproof. I know someone had asked a question about that yeah. earlier in the chat. They have a down layer. So the feathers closest to their body are fluffy and help keep them warm. Then the feathers on the outside of their body are almost waterproof to make sure they don't get wet and cold. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So what is the temperature kept of the water at the zoo? Is there a certain temperature to keep them comfortable? So we take the temperature every day. Currently, we are not regulating the water temperature because these guys can withstand a pretty wide range of temperatures. This morning, it was 39 degrees for them. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> cold for us, but they don't mind it one bit. Yeah. Awesome. Well, there's a few questions in the chat. Folks are asking, um, what did the penguins eat at the zoo? Someone asked, did they get lobster? <laughs> I don't know if they would appreciate lobster, maybe like we do. Um, here we feed them two kinds of fish, one called a capelin and one called a herring. And people are usually pretty shocked about the size of the fish that these guys can eat. Uh, a good rule of thumb is they can eat a fish the size of their flipper. Wow. And they eat them whole. They don't chew them at all. They just <laughs> swallow it down. <sighs> Very cool. Well, we saw earlier before the nature preview clip started some um, clips and video of the penguins at the Blank Park Zoo. And I think there was a clip of um, them getting fed out of the bucket. So that is super <laughs> awesome. Um, how you mentioned the eggs, you showed us the egg and you said that they had two. So how often do they lay eggs? So they lay eggs once a year. Uh, they have their mating and hatching season in the springtime, and then chicks are born in May. Um, but it's pretty cool. It takes a lot of time and energy to lay these eggs, to raise these chicks, and so they only do it once a year. And uh, someone is asking, because we saw kind of the harsh conditions, you mentioned how they give such attention to the babies. <clears throat> what is the average lifespan of a pet? 
<clears throat> of a penguin. So, and how old are the penguins at the zoo? Yes, um, they do have a tough life, but if they can make it out of that first year, they got a pretty good chance of living a long, happy life. Uh, penguin, Magellanic penguins can live to be up about 30 years old. Oh my gosh. So older than some of the zookeepers here. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, they... They can live to be, you know, old stinkers um, <laughs> right now at the zoo. Our oldest penguin is 20 years old. Uh, that's 85. And our youngest penguin is Chiquita. And she'll be turning three in May. Chiquita, that's so sweet. So that's a great lead into the next question about um, were all of the penguins born in captivity at the zoo or where did they come from? Yes. So all of our penguins were born in human care. None of them came from the wild, but only three of them were actually born at the zoo. Oh. They're part of a species survival program. Mm -hmm. So our other penguins come from different zoos and different facilities because they have unique and special genes. Uh, so that way they can have these unique offspring to help spread these awesome genes and help you know keep on the survival of their species. Very cool. And do all, do other zoos participate in that then and kind of like share? Yeah. So okay. we recently just sent two of our male penguins uh, this summer to the Bronx Zoo, oh, and they're going to be part of a species survival program up there. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, there's some questions in the comments too about um, underwater. Um, one asking how fast can they swim and how long can they hold their breath? I know I have a six-year-old. We love to go to the zoo and press that button to see oh. if you can hold your breath longer. <laughs> yes. <it> or, <laughs> so what is the, how long do they hold their breath? So they only hold their breath between two and three minutes, um, but they can swim at speeds of over 15 miles an hour. Wow. <laughs> so fast little guys. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, I know you had answered the question about how you distinguish um, male from female with the penguins at the zoo. Um, someone's asking about the brightly colored colored feathers. Do they serve a purpose other than distinguishing the sex? So the, the bright colored bands that they have? I think um, maybe some of the penguins in the nature clips, you know, have like oh. the macaroni penguins have coloring and different from just black and white. Yes. So um, our penguins at the zoo just have the black and white shading. I'm not totally sure about other penguin species. Um, but our penguins, you know, they, they preen themselves and make themselves gorgeous every day to help attract me. So, <laughs> uh, what are some of the uh, penguins favorite things to do? Do they have activities every day? Do they <laughs> just groom themselves and eat all day? What do they do? Oh, they have, they do have pretty cool routines every day. They love to swim. Um, I'd probably say that might be their favorite activity. And then, <laughs> Throughout that, they do, you know, eat twice a day. And after eating, they have to clean themselves. They preen in the water, get all the fish off of them. And then while they're doing that, uh, they rub the special oil all over their feathers to help make them more waterproof. Oh, very cool. Cool. Um, I think it's either a true statement or a, or a misconception. I'm not sure you'll have to share um, that penguins are very um, connected species that they like to be together and they kind of bond with each other. So someone's asking if you move one away, like the two you'd mentioned went to the Bronx Zoo, um, are they sad? Uh, can you tell like behavioral changes when they're not with who they typically are? Yes. So just like the other species we saw in the documentary, our penguins also prefer to live in these large colonies. Um, if we ever have to separate a penguin, you'll hear them calling or brain to their other mm. penguins. Even if they're in the same room, they want to make sure they're all together. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Um, I think one of the questions gets answered in the nature documentary. And so I'm not sure if you know, but how many different species we saw, I think five different types Um how many different penguin species are there? 15, I think, or something like that? Uh, 18 different species. 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, one question, um, which you have had babies at the zoo, 
when they feed their young, are they regurgitating the whole fish or is it partially digested? <laughs> it is partially digested um, into kind of a mushy paste <laughs> so the chick uh, can eat it better. <laughs> <laughs> and what did the nests look like um, in captivity, like at the zoo when, uh, if they were to create a nest for, to lay an egg, do they yeah. like build it with rocks? So these guys aren't quite like the Adelai where yeah. they need the coolest rock, you know? To yeah, isn't that so cool? <laughs> they prefer a lot of different types of browse and substrate. So we save grasses throughout the year for these guys and oh, cool. give them grasses, uh, different types of substrate, even cat litter. Um, so they can help form a nest. Um, yeah. This past mating or nesting season, um, John, one of our male penguins, made a beautiful nest. He really worked very, very hard on it. So <laughs> maybe this next nesting season, we can take some pictures and show everyone what they look like. Yeah, that would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, and I kind of wanted to know a little bit about your day. I know you mentioned all the other animals that your team cares for. So um, are you assigned to a different group each day? Do you just rotate around? How does that look? It is nice uh, with so many animals. We do get to rotate around every day. Um, so you're not always doing the same routine all the time. You get to kind of switch it up. Uh, but I personally love doing the penguin routine. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I get to hang out with those guys, it's a pretty fun day. And do they sleep a lot, a little, they sleep at night. So these guys during the day, they're mainly swimming or grooming themselves. And then mm -hmm. at nighttime, they all march into the same nest with the same partner. And that's where they sleep all night. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen them do that March. So it's <laughs> very cute. <laughs> uh, a pop quiz. Someone wants to know if you can name all the penguins. Okay. Are we ready? Okay, so uh, two of our penguins have unique names. They're just numbers. So back in the day, they just got nicknamed after their ID numbers. Mm. Uh, so two of our penguins are named 14 and 85. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Neon, Pippi, John, G Slide, Sparkles, and Chiquita. <laughs> what an eclectic group. It really is. <laughs> That is so fun. Um, one other question about kind of their habitat and you mentioned them going in at night and nesting. Um, do they determine if they want to go outside or um, dependent upon the weather? Is that how you make the decision for the best spot for them for the day? So it really varies on the time of year for them. Yeah. Uh, when we had those really cold snaps uh, where the mm -hmm. temperature was in the negatives all day. We didn't let them go outside. Um, they do have temperature guidelines of when we give them access to their pool habitat and when we need to keep them inside uh, mm -hmm. just to keep them safe. But then during nesting season, they tell us if they want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> so one parent must always be on the egg or tending to the chick. So the other one can go outside. If they both want to stay inside, we let them. We just kind of let them decide what they'd like yeah. to do on those days. They're such great mamas and daddies. It was so cool to see all that interaction in the nature clip. And yeah. I, I know I've seen that at the zoo too. So um, I'd like to end on a question that I'm sure all of the, all of our viewers tonight would like to know if they, um, I know we have some out-of-state folks watching, but some in-state or maybe they can make a trip down um, after hearing about all of the Blank Park Zoo penguins, can we come visit? Is the zoo open even in the winter? Um, should we come? Yes, it is open. We're open every day of the week, uh, 10 to four. And the cool part about our penguins is they have an awesome outside exhibit, but if it's too cold for them to go outside, you can still see them inside. Uh, we have an awesome viewing window, so you can still see these guys no matter what. Uh, and they're definitely worth the visit. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're one of my favorites and they're often very visible. I love that you can watch them and they can't really, they're not often like put away or back in their spot. They're, they're usually out so you can, can go visit them and 
see oh, them yes. swim and play. <laughs> There's some spotlight animals. So yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Um, As we wrap up, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you on behalf of Iowa PBS for joining us tonight for this special watch party. And thank you to the Blank Park Zoo for partnering with us again and to Kaylee for providing great insight and conversation about the Blank Park Zoo's penguins. Don't forget you can watch the full hour long Nature Penguins Meet the Family on statewide Iowa PBS tomorrow night at 7 p.m. or you can stream it online on the PBS video app. There's lots of ways now that um, you can watch uh, PBS programming. So do whatever fits you best. Uh, Please join us for future virtual events here on OV and soon to be hopefully in-person events across the state as we get into the warmer outdoor um, season. You can find out about upcoming screenings and discussions at iowapbs.org slash events. And our next special OV event is March 29th at 7 p.m. And we will be partnering with the Iowa Genealogical Society as we dive into Ancestry 101 and kind of relating that back to Finding Your Roots, which is um, a wonderful uh, PBS program that lots of folks enjoy. So you won't want to miss that. Always free. You can always join us. So check out our website for more info. Thank you all so much again and have a great night.